Scripts now support Markdown at the beginning of the script. If you add a multi-line comment and just drop some Markdown inside, you can put uh, whatever you want in here and it'll display that as Markdown before your script preview kicks in. This is a great way of telling the user what's gonna happen in your script, adding bullet points of prompts you're gonna see, things like that. And you can also customize enter metadata right there to change what's displayed inside of the button down here, which shows what's gonna happen once they hit the enter button. And because this is just Markdown, you can come in and use images. I'll just paste in a Markdown image there and you can display just Markdown things in there. And they know that once they hit enter right here, that they're gonna see a picture of a Corgi. You can also create some more long form documentation. So for this script, add choice demo. If I go in my docs directory, create a new file, add choice demo.md, and I just type uh, displays, adding a choice after init, something like that. Now, if I go into my add choice demo script and I say that the preview is docs, this will look for that doc that you created. And the next time you open the prompt, it will go ahead and find that documentation that you wrote and add that before the preview of your script. If you hit command period right now, you can go in and update this and you'll see it's displayed every time you update it. And we'll definitely keep exploring better ways of providing documentation for users for the scripts so we can run scripts with more confidence. The widgets now support dynamic lists, which means that you can pass in an array of items and then later on set the state. So in here, we're doing it with a timer, set the state to a new list of items. That's just shuffling it. So you'll see the behavior here is this items list will keep updating. And if I click on one of the names, you'll see the selected name changes and all the event handlers and stuff stay in place. And this is possible by using data attributes, which you can bind to the items in the list or the state that you pass in. And then on your on click, you look in that event and the data set for that data attribute, and they can use that to set the state and update whatever you want from the widget. So you can both use the V4 for creating dynamic lists, and then on those items use data attributes for dynamic data you're gonna send back and forth between your widget and your script or just inside your widget or however you wanna do it. And this simply allows for more dynamic widgets and live data. For the first pro feature at ScriptKit, if you go over to your account here and you sign up for a pro account, you just sponsor us on GitHub. I'll sign in real quick to show you the, the flow here. This pops open the device authentication page. You'll see this widget with the URL and your code. You just paste in what it copied to the clipboard and hit continue and then authorize it to create gists. And then it's all set. And then ScriptKit will open up again once everything's authorized. And if you're sponsoring, you'll have a little star here showing that you're a sponsor, which unlocks the pro features. So the first pro feature to show off is the themes. So in the theme selector, I'm just gonna browse through some of the themes. Uh, I like the Monokai theme, so I'll go ahead and select that one. And you'll see that the theme changes all throughout the app. And if we go back into the theme selector, there's many themes to choose from now. If you scroll down this list and pick whatever you want. Um, and we also have a theme selector coming soon where you'll be able to customize your own colors and everything. So I'm gonna go back to the Monokai. The next pro feature to show off is the debugger. So if I search for a script that has the debugger statement in it, you'll see this button here changes to debug. So command enter or hitting that button will run the script in debugging mode. And that means that it'll run normally until you hit the debugger. So I'll type something here, hit enter, and you'll see it'll pause at that breakpoint. And you're now able to inspect variables, change variables, do all the things that you're accustomed to in a debugging scenario. And then as soon as you wanna continue, I can just hit continue down there and type the next thing, hit enter, and we're stopped at the debugger again. And we can see we now have one something to the next thing. And you can inspect and play with those as much as you want. Uh, if we continue again, a cool thing you can do while it's paused on a prompt, you can go into the console and you can actually type things like set hint and I can say this is a hint, hit enter, and that will actually update the UI and you can play with the script 
could even do wild things like await arg wow and completely change what's going on in there with this interactive connection between the script and the UI and the debugger and play around with basically anything. And this is thanks to the nature of the script just running line by line and you can interrupt and do whatever you want to it while you're debugging. The next great pro feature to show off is the log window. I'm going to create a script called testing log window to display this. And many users have requested a way to show the output of the commands they run. So say, for example, I just want to list everything that's in there. Now, while you could get the standard out and display it in a div or however you want to do that, this now enables you, if you hit Alt Enter, you could also come into this sub menu, go down to log window. I'll search for log, open log window. Uh, I'll hit Alt Enter to open this window. And this spawns this window here, which anytime I run this script, so I hit enter, it'll automatically add that content, the output of the command or console logs to this log window, and it will automatically update. So if I run it again, you can see that content quickly updated again. Uh, I can modify this script. So if I wanted to compare the previous to the new, I can hit enter now, and you can see it listed everything that came in there. You can go back and see the timestamps and everything that was run. And you can just kind of keep this open and have, have it be a way of monitoring what a script is doing. And this is especially helpful for things like background scripts, for watchers, or anything that you don't have a visual representation of. At any time, you can just come into clear log, and that'll wipe away that log file and start it over so you can uh, run your script again. And the really exciting thing about this for the future is it opens up these persistent windows as a possibility to have persistent editors or terminals or other features that we can do in ScriptKit in the future to spawn these things outside of the prompt that will continue to live and interact with your scripts to unlock a lot of very powerful features and workflows.